If you want to see how I made this beginner friendly Christmas loaded pocket, then just keep on watching. Hello, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Since this is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club, let me first show you the downloads I chose for this fun project. In case you are new here, the Digital Collage Club is a membership-based website with thousands of royalty-free digital craft supplies. Once you sign up either for a year or a lifetime membership, you get instant access. All images are created exclusively for this club. You get new images each week and you are able to sell the craft items you created with these images. So as I mentioned, there are two options available, a membership for one year or a lifetime, which means you pay once and have access to all the images and tutorials for your whole life. You can find discount codes for both types of memberships linked below in the description box. I would like to point out that I do receive a commission if you use these links. So it's also a huge help for my small creative business. As always, thank you in advance if you sign up or if you joined in the past using my link. Please note that in order to use my codes for the discount, you need to use the link below, otherwise it will not work. So all we need for the pocket is three envelopes. It doesn't matter how tall or how wide they are. They should not be the ones that are more or less formed like a postcard. So they should be the longer ones, but it doesn't matter what your exact measurements are. Also, it does not matter how your closure looks like, whether they're sealed like this or they have like this triangular flap doesn't matter. You just need three that are exactly the same. So we're going to start off by closing off the envelopes. So I'll just add glue to this part and close that up. Wipe away any excess glue that squishes out. You could also just use less glue than I do. <laughs> And I do that with the other two as well. Once all three envelopes are closed, I'm going to round the corners. This is optional. You don't have to do this. I'm going to do that on all three envelopes on all four corners. Once we have all the corners rounded, we're going to cut these envelopes open on the small sides and we'll do that with all of the sides except one. We leave one closed. I'm going to do this with my paper trimmer. You can just as well do it with scissors. I know I cannot cut straight so I would rather use my guillotine and I'm really just cutting a sliver open. Like this. And now that I'm thinking of it, don't do what I just did. <laughs> because if you do that, you won't have a nice corner. So obviously you need to cut your slivers first and then you round your corners, please. If you happen to cut all of them by mistake, it's not a problem. So since I didn't think ahead, and my corners aren't nicely rounded anymore. I'm just going to go and round all those again. So I have all my envelopes here with the rounded corners. This is the one where I did not cut off a sliver on the end. So now we'll fold. I'm not giving you measurements because I don't measure. We're going to do this by winging it. So I'm taking the first envelope and I'm folding it up approximately two thirds of the envelope, making sure that I have my edges lined up. It's helpful to crease it. Then I take the next envelope and I place it so that it's approximately in the middle. And again, I'm going to fold the bottom flap up and crease it. 
And I do the same thing with the third one. Again, this is the one which is still closed on the bottom. And again, I place it in the middle and I fold this up and crease it. So now I have this. And now what I want to do is I want to fold the tops down. So where we have these rounded corners now, we just fold a flap down so that the pocket that we have is open here. And then we crease it again. So that will look like this. And I do the same thing for all of my open pockets. I'll just fold them down, burnish them. And there's three more. So now we have something that looks like this. And the next thing I'm going to do is to take them apart again. And then I'm going to spray them with coffee, just like you would dye your journal pages with coffee, both front and back. And once those are dry, we continue. Obviously, you don't have to coffee dye your papers. <laughs> If you don't want to, you just leave them white and you can then cover them later on. This is just what I like doing. So I have fussy cut various images from various kits from the Digital Collage Club. And I paid attention to having different sizes because our pockets are different sizes. So I wanted some smaller ones, some larger ones. And I also paid attention to the styles of the kits so that they would fit together. So I think all of these go together really well and are super fun. I think I used six or seven different kits. The cool thing, of course, with the Digital Collage Club is you don't have to worry about how many different kits you're using because it's all one flat fee. So you can download as many as you like. So I think this is a really fun variety of different items. And while it would be really cute to just add these to the pockets as they are, I think it's nicer when we give these pieces of ephemera a personalized touch so that we add a little bit more of ourselves into this project and whoever the receiver is will know that you've spent some time on it and it will make it that much more special. So the first thing I want to do is on the backs, I want to add a little more interest because I think these white backs are quite boring. So the first thing I want to do is to just add some coffee. So I just take a few pieces of old newspaper, then I'm just going to lay out my pieces of ephemera. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle with coffee. I don't have a recipe for the mixture. It's different every time. I just take the cheapest instant coffee I can find in the supermarket. I heat up some water. It doesn't even have to be boiling. And then I stir in maybe say two heaped tablespoons into maybe a liter, liter and a half of water. It really doesn't matter. It all depends how dark you want your coffee. It's definitely worth experimenting if you are not familiar with this. And I'm not just dipping these in coffee because of course we have the print here and that would ruin the print. So that's why I'm just doing this on the back sides. And I'm just going to randomly spray these for a little interest. These will curl up a little bit, as you can see, but that's totally fine. We can always bend them back. And in order to speed up the drying time, I like to take a kitchen towel and then I will dab all the puddles. We will still have enough interest but these will be dry in no time. You can either set them in the sun, which is probably a little difficult at this in this time of year, or you can use a heat gun if you have it or a blow dryer. 
So I quickly dried them off and they look cute like this already, but we can do better. So I'm going to add some more splattering. Since it's me, it's going to be gold, obviously. <laughs> I'm using my beloved Van Gogh watercolor 803 in deep gold. You can use any watercolor or thinned down acrylic paint or anything that's water soluble and just have fun splattering. You can use Christmassy colors. You can use maybe some shimmery colors. Maybe you have some metallic paints. There's so much you can do. I'm going to stick to my gold. So I put some in here and I'm going to add some water. Uh, yeah, water, not coffee. You could also add coffee. That would of course make it darker, but I just want the water for now. And then I'll just have some fun randomly splattering. I just love relaxing projects like this. <laughs> you just have fun playing with your mediums. Okay, I think that's good. So these I will just let air dry as they are. So once our envelopes are coffee dyed, this is what they will look like. And We'll put them back together. Hopefully you will still see your folds. And you might have to bend these down again. Make sure they're all bent down nicely. And then I want to add something to the back here. There's many different things you could add to the back. You could just spray it. You could stencil. You could stamp it. You could add some Christmassy themed cardstock. You could decoupage some Christmassy themed napkins. But what I'm going to do is add a piece of fabric. I inherited this from my mom. My mom used to sew a lot and she also used to make quilts. And I found this and I think this would be really cute for this project. So I'm going to cut out a rectangle that will fit on the back here. And I'm going to use my pinking shears. I think the biggest challenge with pinking shears is to cut it straight. <laughs> At least that's my biggest challenge. It's a bit wonky, but that's okay. For this, I'm using textile glue. You can also use tacky glue or any other kind of glue you might have. I think it makes sense to thin it down a little bit. I'll just add some water. It's always easiest to add the glue to your most stable substrate. So in this case, our envelope is more stable than the fabric. So that's why I'm adding it to the envelope. Then we just place the fabric on top, make sure it's wrinkle free, wipe off any excess from these edges. Since I have some fabric left, why not use that to make another little pocket back here. So again, I'm going to use my pinking shears and just cut that a little bit more narrow than the other piece of fabric. And I'll also use the pinking shears for the top. If you have a sewing machine and you think about this in advance, it would totally make sense to cut this piece out and sew it on before you adhere the fabric to the envelope, of course. But we didn't do that. <laughs> And I want this pocket to stand out a little bit more because at the moment, I think from the camera, you can't even see that there's a pocket. So I'm going to try taking some of my watercolor. This is the Van Gogh. And I'm going to take my brush and just go along the edges. I've never tried this before with fabric. <laughs> but it seems to work. I could either just do this top edge or I could go around and do the whole fabric. I'm just going to leave the top edge. I think that's accent enough. This is what it looks like when it's dry. And now I can just adhere it on my three sides. by Just adding a little bit of glue 
around the three sides. And then I'd like to add one of these Merry Christmas printouts to the pocket. It's a bit wide, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit. So I'll just cut right outside that inner border. Now that fits, so I can just glue that on. Always helpful to open up your glue bottle. Before I adhere that, I'm going to add a little piece of parchment paper into my pocket because fabric, of course, is a porous material, meaning that our glue is going to seep through and I don't want the pocket to be stuck together. So until that's dry, we'll leave that parchment paper inside. For the edges, we could either just ink it up with, for example, vintage photo or any other color you like, but I want to make this look more festive. So I'm going to stick to this gold and brush that onto all of my edges here, as well as on all of these edges. I'm actually going to start from the front because I think that's a little more work. <laughs> I can still take these apart. So I'm just going to go along these like this. So I'll do that for all of my edges, also along the sides here and also around these here. Everything is dry now, so this is what it looks like. Love the gold edging. Also added it to the back here. And now I want to add some more interest to these parts here. And I will do that with some stenciling. I don't have any Christmas themed stencils, but I have this one, which is Tim Holtz THS032. I will do my best to link this for you underneath this video. I'm again going to use the same gold. This is what the tube looks like, 803 Van Gogh watercolor. And this time I'm not going to dilute it with water. I want this as thick as possible. The beginning sometimes of this is quite strange. I'm taking a flat stippling brush. You can also use a little sponge or whatever you like to stencil with. I'm going to mix this up. It's a bit gooey. <laughs> and I want to make sure I don't have too much on my brush. This is quite translucent. I'm going to squish this so I can hopefully mix it up a bit better. Mm, don't think that did anything. Okay, we'll see what it looks like. So I'm going to start on the top. So I'll just take this off. We're only going to see the very top of it. So I'm gently just going to stipple that. Super important not to have too much paint on your brush because then it will run through the stencil and it will look horrible. It's okay, it could be better, but I don't know, something's wrong with this tube. I'll set this aside and we'll continue doing that for the others as well. And before I put my stencil down, I'm checking on the back here. See, I have some that went through. I want to be sure to wipe that off gently, gently, so we don't ruin our stencil. If you don't have a stencil, you could just stamp. So there's number two. Now we need to do this one. So that one came out better because I added some of the gold here from my older watercolor tube. And I also want to add some to these two flaps because we'll see some of that as well. But first I need to dry these here. And I'm going to use the stencil from the bottom. And I'm going to bend this flap up. That worked really well. Then I'll do it for this one and for this one as well. 
So the drier your paint, the better this is going to work. My, dr my, my paint is super dry at the moment and that's when it seems to work best. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Very precise. And lastly, this one. Once everything is dry, we can just assemble it. And now we can glue down the sides. So I'll add glue alongside here and here, all the way to the top. And I'll just set it here in the crease and press that down. Then I'll do the same thing with the next envelope. So I'll put glue on this side and on this side. Okay, now we just need to adhere these two flaps in the same way. And lastly, we have this small one here. And now just to make sure that everything is glued down well, I'm going to use some clamps until that glue is dry. So the sides are stuck down well. We have 10 pockets in the front and we have one here in the back. And I think I can take this parchment paper out now. We have our ephemera, which has some interest on the back so that they're not so plain. And now the fun part is, of course, to figure out what you want where. And then we can still decide, do we want to add a few more little embellishments to make it a little more interesting? So the small ones will obviously go more towards the bottom. I'll stick one of these in here and one in here. You can also add one of these cute little reefs and one here. And let's put this one all the way in the back. I also don't want to stick him in straight. I think it's cute when they are at different angles. Maybe we want to keep one of these for the back here. How about this little guy? He can just peek out like that. I'd say this is a really loaded pocket. <laughs> this is what it looks like from the side. This would also be fun maybe in a journal. This is the back side. Maybe we can add something small down here. I don't want to cover up all this stenciling here, but maybe we can find something to add there. How about a little piece of this fabric so that we have it both on the front and the back? And then we could either add a cute button or I can also maybe use one of these dried hydrangea petals. They have gold splatters on them already, so they are good to go. So I'll just glue that down and maybe we can even add a bead or something on top of that.
maybe something like that. Then I cut out this Merry Christmas from one of these and I edged it with gold like I did with the envelope sides. I'm just going to glue that down in the front. So at least we still see some of the stenciling. I found some Christmas themed ribbons. What if we add one down here? I think this gold one might look pretty. Just across like that. So you can go as crazy with these as you like. It's so much fun to decorate these. We could even add a fun little dangly thing. Maybe up here would be the best spot for that. Let's take this out. Let's punch a small hole. Let's take this out too. Probably best to punch right through both envelope layers I'm using the small hole punch and taking a small eyelet and then i'll set that if you are a beginner invest in a crocodile this is a tool you will have your whole life and you will love it every time you have a project where you want to add something fun so there's my eyelet and I have a fun little dangle here on a bulb clip, which I was gifted by my friend Sonia. Really cute. I think this is a great project to add that to. And now we have a cute little dangle there as well. So let's stick our cards back in. So that's my easy and fun Christmas loaded pocket. I hope you really enjoy making your own, gifting it to a friend or a family member maybe, or adding it to your own journal as like a floating pocket. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.